So today on my branch bench, I just stopped by the local Goodwill and I found this uh, Hewlett Packard 55 scientific calculator and um, it works a little bit. Uh, the keyboard is clearly not working right. Um, you can type in some numbers but not others uh, and it behaves a little, little strangely. But I'm just going to take it apart. Uh, if you look at the back, there's just a ton of corrosion from a bad battery in there. So I'm going to take it apart and clean it up. And I got the power supply with it too. And uh, here's the back. You can see I got a $1.99. And um, yeah, so I think I'll take a look and see if I can clean it up, getting it, get it working better. Uh, I think this is going to be a pretty interesting machine to look at. I should be able to put that together with some cells, I don't know. Okay, let's see what's holding this together. Yeah, that screw is pretty rusted. I'm guessing there might be some screws under here. Yep. Look at that. Logic Software Key C, July 1, 1975.
So I have no idea what these things are. These things are. Okay, so I think first I'll clean this out. Okay, so I was curious. This power supply, uh, this HP power supply, seemed like it had weird uh, voltage readings coming out of it. And I found the schematic on the internet, and um, and and uh, what it's showing is is that you've got three pins coming out of the power supply like that one two three and then one of them is current limited the other one's four volts and um, and the other one's uh, ground and when uh, And so that when you have something plugged in, so here are the, the three connectors, and it's strange because one connector comes from the battery up to here, and the other one comes from ground from the battery, but this is not connected to the wire that goes to power the device, right? But if you look... Um, at the uh, case, there is little contacts in here, and those contacts uh, they when there's nothing plugged in here, they short the power from the battery up through here over to here to the device, and then the ground wire is just connected. But when there's something plugged in, then this connector here goes straight down to here and puts the current limited voltage into the battery to charge the battery and then the four volts just goes directly over to the device. It's really a clever design. So I've been working to clean up. I had all kinds of that blue corrosion in here. I cleaned this out and I cleaned that off as best I could. Um, these contacts are all very high quality, so I'm using abrasion as little as possible. But here, um, the corrosion did eat away the, the surface. And um, so it'd be interesting uh, to see how well that contacts. And then cleaning inside here, cleaning off this because your power supply voltage does have to, or your battery supply does have to contact these two things and, and work through there. So I'm cleaning it all up. And um, we'll see how that works. Like I say, I put some deoxid on these contacts here. Uh, I put deoxid on here, but I'm really careful with these. These are <laughs> beautiful connectors. Uh, and um, so I'm just kind of messing with those. This one here does seem to be pushed in a little bit. And uh, I'm going to take a close look at that. And see if it needs to be repaired. It doesn't look like it. It might have been from the factory, but I'm kind of looking through that to see if I. Um, it's just a little bit lower. I don't think that'll be a problem. And then I haven't touched this yet, but I'm gonna see about cleaning off these keys.
So this one connector right here, it looks like it's kind of been pushed down. I'm going to see if I can clean it up and get it back into position, but I'm worried I might do more harm than good, but, but I'm messing with it anyway. Okay, that should hold in place while I solder. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. And I'm just going to... I put the oxid on here to clean these up. So hopefully it'll go together and work beautifully. Okay, so I just put some new tape on there. And I'll have to resolder. And it goes like so that goes like that. And then so this goes like this. One down.
don't know, it looks like it's looking much better than it was before. But um, it does look like some of the segments are missing. Um, are not being either properly driven or there's bad contact to them. So here's the timer mode. That starts the timer. Stops it. Well, it does look like um, my center segments are a little bit messed up. They seem to be almost, yeah, they're just kind of missing from that the first segment. It's like an area around there that's bad. I don't know what to say there. But if I do things like 256 times... 65536, software guy like me likes that. Okay, so I don't have a battery for it. Might order that, but I'm going to try. I just have my variable power supply hooked up um, at 4 volts. Yeah, let's see. So that looks to work. Turn it up a little bit. Five volts. So if I have it at five volts, it is brighter, but it still doesn't fix those segments. But it does show that this part's working and it's um, this little clip here is properly shorting across here to here. So it goes from, so the power goes from here over to this pin here through this metal strip and then the, to the positive there. <clears throat> I'm going to open it up again and see if I can. Uh, more corrosion. I'm going to see if I can see any solder problems over by the display. I kind of doubt it, but I'm going to check anyway. So there's the display. I don't know, I'm going to take a close look at it. It looks a little bit dirty because whatever glue was holding this on messed up. But these are actually separate segments, 8 pin segments, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, one, so 14 pin segments and um, <clears throat> and they're just kind of cocked up like that, so I don't know. I'm going to take a close look and see if I can figure out why that's not displaying properly. Okay, so uh, the calculator is up and running. One thing I noticed when it comes on, it comes in at a fixed uh, two decimal points. We can change that by changing fix nine. And then when we do things like get pi, it shows all the digits. Um, everything seems to be working on the, the front. I noticed that um, one thing that's different than some of the stuff I read is that 
when you want to store numbers, like let's say I wanted to store pi as, um, it's got uh, 10 registers, and if I want to change, store it in like the fifth register, I'll go store point five, right? Then if I do recall point five, brings that number back. And there are 10 of those registers, and because um, I was looking at like some, uh, a program to kind of test um, the programming, and uh, in here it says recall one, but for this calculator it'd be recall point one, which makes this program so you can't use it because there's only 50 programming steps, and um, to get the decimal point in there it wouldn't quite work. But let me just show you quick the the programming. Like let's say. Um, if you want to figure out the uh, the watts of a stereo receiver, uh, that equals the voltage RMS squared over the uh, like let's say eight ohms. If you're going into an eight ohm load, load eight ohm load. That's what I. That's something I use a lot. So if I wanted to program it, then I'd go over to program. And I go um, squared uh, eight divided, and then go to zero zero, and then. I should be able to go to the first step and then if let's say I've got 12 volts RMS run, bing, I get 18, um, 18 watts. So that's just how the programming's done and uh, it's pretty fancy. Uh, but here you can see some of the digits are not lighting up correctly, and that first um, that first LED is kind of a chip like this. And um, I tried resoldering some of the pins; it didn't make any difference, and I can kind of see that because, like these center segments here, they seem to work, but these two don't. And um, some of the one of the LEDs here and here work but the inner ones don't so it I think this would have to be replaced if I wanted to get it to work but um, it's got some fancy things on it like uh, I mean fancy for the time obviously but also like uh, you know it's 1975 so of course we need metric conversion so if I put in um, 212 degrees and I want to go to centigrade it gives me a hundred which makes sense. So there's all kinds of metric conversions in here. Um, the sine and cosine, like if I want 180 sine, zero, obviously. And I think that if I go to radians and then do pi, yep, same answer. So, um, so that's pretty fancy for the time. And uh, of course, it's all re reverse Polish notation. So if I want to multiply two numbers, it's 45 enter 25 times. And I think it's got four stack levels uh, in the stack arithmetic. Yeah, so I still have some work to do, and I'm going to end the video or whatever. Um, the battery that we looked at before, uh, the battery case. Uh, D cells will fit in here, so I'm just going to buy three NICAD uh, battery cells and put those in here and then take these and just unsolder these parts and see if I can get it to going, get it going on the cheap. Anyway, so that's my video, the Hewlett Packard 55. If you like this video, please subscribe. Thank you. Bye.